often used, often misunderstood, the before and after pseudo elements. The before and after pseudo elements are really good ways to add extra style to your website without adding extra markup that you don't really need. The problem is a lot of people don't understand really what's going on when we're using before and after and also the, the power that they actually have. This video is the part of a three part series where we're going to be exploring pseudo elements. In this video we're exploring how they actually work. In the next video we're going to explore the contents property a bit more and just really what it can do and some of the really cool stuff you can do with it that you probably don't know about. And in the third video we're going to be taking a look at actually how to use it to spice up your designs and to make some really cool looking stuff. So here we have a super basic example where I have a paragraph just sitting in the middle of our page. Now I can select this paragraph pseudo element um, and there's two of them. There's the before and the after pseudo elements. So we have two of them that we'll look at. I can do the before element by writing it out like that. So it's P double colon and the word before. Um, as a side note, you might see some tutorials online or some mentions of it with one colon like that. Technically, that's wrong. Um, the original specification for it was written with just one. When we got the level three specification for it, it's when they, they made it with the double colon and it's to represent a pseudo element, whereas the single one would be uh, something like your A hover, so that's a pseudo class. So with, when they did the whole CSS3 thing, level three specification for a lot of these things, they changed it from um, for suit. They changed it to distinguish pseudo elements from pseudo classes. So technically, this is the right way to do it. But browsers still support it with one, just because they don't want to break all of the old stuff and how it used to be done. So they support both of them. So to actually use a pseudo element, I can do a whole bunch of stuff in here, and nothing's going to happen. So just to show you, if I do like background, red, display, block, position, absolute top zero bottom zero left zero right zero i do all this stuff and nothing is actually happening i can't see anything and it's because there's no it doesn't exist yet my pseudo element is not there so what i need to do to actually get a pseudo element to work is add content and just do that for now i just put two little um quotation marks single or double and all of a sudden it works so it's position absolute to the page top bottom it's just covering everything um, I'm gonna take just display block we'll leave it like that for now and I'm just gonna do width I don't know 10 pixels and we'll give it a height of 10 pixels and we should see a little red thing up here there we go so content tells it that, well, there should be some content. If we don't add this, it defaults to none. And no matter what you try, you can't use it. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm going to have a whole video talking about what the content property is. For now, we just need to know we need to include it there. Now, to understand what's really going on, we're going to jump into our dev tools. Because a lot of people, this is what a lot of people don't really actually understand. So here in my dev tools, I have my paragraph. And I'm going to open up this paragraph. And we're going to see that there's a before inside of it. So let's just make that a bit bigger. I'm going to zoom in. Um, so we can see that here's the content itself. And here's my little before thing that I just created. Now, the misconception that a lot of people have is they think that when we're using P before, it's something that's being inserted before the paragraph itself. But that's not true. It's getting inserted before the content of that paragraph. Or if you're it's on a div, it'd be the con before the content of that div. So it's the same story with after. So if I take the exact same code I already have here. So there we go. If I take all of this and I copy it and then I paste it and add an after here, we'll see that pop in in one second. And so before my content of my paragraph and the last one is after the content of my paragraph. So it's all included inside the paragraph itself and that's the main misconception people have a lot of the a lot of the time especially at the beginning people think it's coming before the paragraph and after the paragraph and that isn't what's happening and it's important to understand that especially when you start styling stuff with it um, because a lot of the time you're going to be using some position absolute on these and knowing how that works is really important so uh, i'm just going to close this off and i'm actually going to add uh, in my html here i'm going to add an image uh, it won't be going anywhere. We'll just do well. It will just be a, a placeholder on splash it 500 by 500. And the reason I'm doing this is it's really important to know that 
Sometimes it would be really useful to add a pseudo element to an image. You can't do it. So just to show you here, if I do, so I'm gonna do my image for, let's say content is nothing once again, just a blank content, uh, display block width 100 pixels, height 100 pixels, and a background of purple. Uh, nothing shows up on the screen. And if I do an inspect on that, we're gonna see that on my image, there's nothing, there's no before or after or anything like that. And this is because there is no content or perhaps a better way to think about it is that the image is the content. Images are something called replaced elements, which are weird and really confusing and I'm not gonna get into that now, except just to say that they don't really fit into the typical content model of CSS. The image's source is the content, so they behave differently. So, is, and I'm talking about this because one time I went on for a long time trying to figure out why my before wasn't working on an image and I couldn't figure out what the hell I was doing wrong. I don't want that to happen to you. So don't try putting pseudo elements on images. It will not work. Um, but with that out of the way, let's, um, I'm gonna change my content here on my before. And let's just take this after off. We don't need it right now. Um, I'm gonna just take my width and height off of this. So I have nothing much, but I'm gonna add in here, I'm gonna write hello. And you can see hello shows up. And actually let's take off the display of block as well. Um, there we go, hello. And you can see that the hello is showing up and it has a red background on it and it's there and that's cool. I can write stuff before. Um, so again, it's showing up before this. And I, I can style this however I want. I can give this its own font size, font size of say 10 pixels, uh, font weight of 800, maybe 10 is a little small, we'll go with 20. And there you go, just to, you know, you can style this completely separately from uh, the other stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Now you probably won't be necessarily writing things like hello, but we're gonna see more useful um, options of this. And of course, if I take this exact same thing, just like I did before, and I switch it to after, we'll get the same thing over there. Maybe this could say goodbye. So you can see where the elements are fitting in there. And one thing you may have noticed is that these pseudo elements are in line by default. They're lining up with the content itself. But of course I can change that, display block. And now they're block level and they'll each take up their, oops, that's on this one, copy, paste. And now they're both block level elements. And you can already see a little bit of how I could use this maybe as a design element instead of putting in text. And the cool thing with before and after is it lets us add some really neat things without needing the extra markup that you know you might need for this, especially for design elements where you don't really want to be inserting divs just to you know I have an empty div just for a design element. I don't have to do that. I can use my before and after to do that. Yeah, the con the, the content property is something that you can do some really cool extra stuff that I don't see a lot out there. So I'm assuming people don't even know that it's available. So we're going to check that out in the next video. And as I mentioned, we're also going to take a more global look at awesome ways we can actually use this. But before we can really do that, uh, this video I think was instrumental because you need to understand what's actually going on before you can do that. And there you have it. I hope you have a better understanding of what the before and after suit elements actually are and how they work. Uh, if you have any questions or anything I didn't clear up, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. If you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Of course, a big thank you to my patrons who helped make this possible. If you'd like to know how you can support this channel, just go and look at the description down below. You'll find a link to the Patreon page. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.